Alright, so here we are with Cyberpunk 2077 on the Intel Arc B580. All my specs are on the top left hand corner there, but in case you can't read that, it's a uh, B580 obviously, and uh, that is paired with an i5 12400F CPU, and that again is paired with DDR4 3600 megatransfers per second CL18 memory. So let me just go over the settings here quickly. We'll be testing at 1080p and 1440p. Currently, although it does say, I mean, there you can see it. 1080p and although it does say custom i set everything to high and i just disabled any resolution scaling so that we can test that native and you can see everything is set to high over here except for uh, crowd density because uh, i mean at the high piece it does set it to medium but the 12400f is actually a little bit weak for this uh, gpu at 1080p so you can see we are definitely cpu bound here I did pair the 12400F with this GPU because I do think it is a more budget budget option. And uh, if you are looking to spend $250 on a GPU, you are probably going to be spending less than that on a CPU. And the 12400F is actually not a, not a terrible pairing for, for this the GPU, except in certain areas like over here, we are CPU bound. But if we drive away from that specific scene, we will see that the GPU usage does start to increase and we are getting around 90-ish frames per second here, right? Between 80 and 90 and 90% uh, 90 GPU usage. It does fluctuate a little, little bit and uh, it always stutters there for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, our lows did take a little bit of a dip there. But we are almost the GPU bound, but also not really. But you can see our average frame rate here is 83 frames per second. Now, you do have the option of enabling upscaling. Obviously, you do have access to FSR and XSS, but let me just show you here. We do have uh, FSR 3, which gives you the option for native AA. And then we do have XSS 1.3, which does not give you the, access, the option for native. All right. So ultra quality would be the same as quality on FSR. Now I'm going to show you what FSR looks like here at 1080p. It doesn't look good. Okay. Just going to reset our numbers and uh, there's a lot of shimmering. 1080p is definitely not the resolution to use uh, if you, if you're planning on using upscaling, unfortunately. So the other option we basically do have is to use frame generation and we'll do that right now but uh, you can see here we are getting a lot of shimmering a lot of uh, artifacting it's definitely not that good of an experience we did see a slight increase to our frame rate so around 90 ish frames per second there so if we go ahead and then just switch this over to XSS on ultra quality, we should get more or less the same frame rate because uh, ultra quality and uh, episode quality would be the same. And uh, you can see we are getting around 90 frames per second. Let me just reload my save quickly. Okay, we're back. Let me reset our numbers. And you can see we are getting uh, around 90 frames per second, right? So we did get a slight boost to our frame rate using uh, XSS Ultra Quality here. And it definitely looks better than FSR Quality, okay? There's still a little bit of shimmering. Some overhead lights do have uh, some issues and uh, objects in the distance still shimmer quite a bit if you look at it at certain angles, etc. It's not horrible. Okay, but it is, uh, I, I definitely think that XSS native would be a very good uh, option in this game. Right, so around uh, 80, 90 ish frames per second. It's a very good experience actually on the high preset, I'm not going to lie. And we're going to be continue testing on the high preset uh, just because we, we are getting a pretty decent experience here. No, no need to drop down to the medium and the low presets. And the ultra preset is just a little bit too. Uh, too expensive right so if we go ahead and uh, unfortunately if you want to enable fsr frame generation you have to use uh, fsr upscaling which is not usually the norm with fsr 3.1 right fsr 3.1 was basically um decoupling frame generation from the upscaling portion and you could use frame generation without having to resort to fsr upscaling so let's let's do native aa because native aa does look better than fsr quality at 1080p so let me just reset our numbers here and now we are getting a high refresh rate experience sure you do get added input latency but at this high frame rate it's really 
not that noticeable. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not one of the people who are extremely sensitive to input latency. Let's get a car here, yeah. um, drive around a bit. I'm not, I'm really not that uh, sensitive to input latency, but I can, there is a point where it gets too much for me and uh, this is not it. It really is pretty decent. These guys, uh, every time I get on a car, <laughs> They start chasing me, it gets a little bit annoying. Um, not going to try and take care of them, just uh, trying to complete my benchmark right here. But you can see our average frame rate, there's 150 frames per second. Very, very good experience here. And sure, you do take a little bit of a hit with the, the visuals because you have to use FSR. But then again, there's really, I don't know, it excess quality or ultra quality at 1080p does look better than FSR native here. But if you do want to use frame generation, unfortunately you have to use FSR, right? So if we then go ahead, I'm just going to enable FSR quality if you do want a little bit of a higher frame rate still. Now we will become a little bit more CPU bound here and uh, that's actually where frame generation helps a little bit more. But I think we are so <laughs> CPU limited now that it's not really making that big a difference and visuals definitely took uh, a massive hit. I would not recommend playing with FSR quality at 1080p and enabling frame duration on top of that. But we are getting, uh, we saw 200 frames per second there. So <laughs> if you are looking for uh, an extremely high refresh rate uh, output, because it's not a true high refresh rate experience, right? Because of the added input latency, but the visual smoothness does equal that of 200 frames per second. Okay, so 180 frames per second Yeah, I think um, it, it's good, but let me show you if you, if we actually just go to 1440p. All right, so here we are at 1440p native, so no upscaling, let me just reset the camera there. We are getting a very, very consistent and decent frame rate at 70 frames per second, still on the high preset. Let me just show you the settings again quickly. Now, if we can set to 1440p, and then still the custom preset with everything set to high, and no ray tracing. I'm going to test one, one ray trace, the, to, I'm going to do one ray trace test later, but no resolution scaling and no frame generation, right? So 1440p, 60 frames per second is definitely possible. Yeah, you can see our GPU usage is now basically pegged at 98%, which is uh, definitely much better than, I mean, the previous uh, settings where we were very CPU bound. Now we are definitely GPU bound. You can even see our GPU power is sitting at around 130 watts. Now, I mean, this is a perfectly good experience, but this is, uh, the 1440p is actually very good res resolution to start using upscaling. So we can go ahead and uh, in this case, we can definitely start using, oops, wrong button again. We can start using XSS and uh, we'll start off with ultra quality, which is the same as DLSS and FSR quality, right? So let me just uh, reset our numbers here. We will start becoming a little bit more CPU bound now once again, because we are now actually rendering internally at lower than 1080p again. And, uh, but still it's getting between 80 and uh, 90 frames per second. I'm just driving around here. Whatever people complain that my running around is quite boring. I don't think my driving is much better, but uh, let's just go ahead and drive around a bit. Driving is actually a little bit more intensive in this game than running around, but uh, just doing this due to popular request. But you can see as soon as we get out of the car, we're getting 100 something frames per second. So driving is more demanding and running around is less demanding, obviously. And then, uh, Pretty decent, decent experience here, I think. Now, if we want to start using frame generation, let me let me just do one more thing. I'm going to just use quality here, which would be the same as uh, balanced, the DLSS and FSR balanced. Okay, you'll get more or less the same performance. We did gain a little bit, and uh, that's just my spider sense tingling. So we did gain a little bit, but I mean, really not that uh, that big a difference to our frame rate. So I do think that the ultra quality preset is the best to use and uh, at 1440p at least. And even at 1080p, it, it is usable, although I'd not recommend it. But you can see here uh, just that there is still a lot of uh, shimmering and inconsistencies uh, like breakup in the finer details here, like this fence. All right. But uh, Unfortunately, this game is quite heavy and you have to rely on, on upscaling if you do want a, 
a higher refresh rate experience, right? But that's enough of XCSS. Let's just go ahead and do uh, FSR frame generation quickly. And once again, we have to use FSR 3 here. So let's start off with FSR native AA. We should be getting around uh, 60 frames per second, right? So just going to do a short run here in this uh, marketplace that is quite CPU intensive again. But you can see we are definitely fully GPU bound and uh, that's good. We, we are maintaining basically 60 frames per second. It drops below 60 every now and again. But this is actually prime territory for us to start enabling frame generation and uh, FSR native at 1440p definitely looks a lot better than at, uh, at 1080p. All right, so now with FSR frame generation enabled, we are getting 100 something frames per second. Frame time graph is quite smooth. I think they did improve the FSR frame generation portion a little bit. When I first had a look at it, it looked, it, it was actually pretty bad when it comes to uh, the frame time graph, the, the frame time consistencies, that was pretty bad. But it does look like it has improved a little bit with the updates. Or maybe the XSS or the Intel GPU is doing it a little bit better than, <laughs> than the NVIDIA GPU did at the time. Uh, these guys are quite quick. So, 100 something frames per second here at native uh, resolution with the frame generation enabled. The input latency is perfectly fine. I mean, anything, if, if, you, can, if you can hit at least 60-ish frames per second before you start enabling frame generation, the experience should be pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and then just use a uh, FSR quality here. Uh, see if we can hit 120, 130 frames per second here. Okay, the boost, it was... Uh, a little bit more than I expected. So we are seeing 150-ish something frames per second. And we are still fully GPU bound here. You can see our GPU power is sitting at 130 watt, give or take our GPU usage is sitting at 99%. That's what you want. And uh, the frame times are still pretty decent. Uh, not not as smooth as, uh, as on high-end GPUs, but I mean, it makes perfect sense, right? It is, it is a $250. <laughs> Uh, GPU, but I can tell you that it does, it definitely feels very, very good. I don't have any complaints here whatsoever. 150 frames per second, 1440p. With the uh, quality upscaling, this is, uh, this is a decent experience, obviously without any ray tracing, which we'll go ahead and enable sometime soon. But uh, just driving around here, you can see still maintaining 100 and uh, 30, 100 and, well, between 130 and 150 FPS here. There is some finer detail once again that uh, that starts to shimmer a bit, but unfortunately that is just FSR. Hopefully FSR comes around, FSR 4 comes around and fixes this, but uh, as it stands now, it seems like FSR 4 would be uh, RDNA 4 exclusive, I mean, which is which is not the end of the world. I mean, it, all of them have their exclusive technologies and uh, XCSS or Intel also have uh, their own frame generation, which is also exclusive. It's just, it's supported in very few games at the moment, but 140-ish frames per second, even in this uh, very CPU uh, intensive uh, area, still GPU bound. Obviously frame generation helps a lot with that. And I think this is actually pretty good. So I'm going to use these exact same settings, right? So FSR quality with frame generation enabled, and we're going to enable ray tracing. Okay, I did test path tracing earlier. <laughs> Um, it didn't go so well. So let's just, I'm going to stand still and I'm just going to do individual toggles. So currently we, let, let me get rid of those first. Okay, so we went from 150 frames per second to 86 frames per second. This is with frame generation enabled and the input latency is very, very noticeable here at the moment. This is, this is quite heavy. The, the response time but from me moving my mouse to it actually moving on the screen is, is pretty bad because our, our base frame rate would be around 43 frames per second, yeah, right? Exactly half of what we see there. But there are also a lot of artifacts on the screen there, which is very weird. All right, so I don't think that, uh, or, or right, the, these settings don't really make that big a difference. Okay, so you can see we we dropped around five, six frames per second using or, or 10 frames per second, right? Just enabling shadows, whatever. But there is some, some additional artifacting it does not look as good as it should and then last test i'm just going to enable path tracing <laughs> okay it's not uh gp is not meant to 
uh, to be used for path tracing. Still a lot of artifacting here going on. I don't know what, what's going on, but we, we're losing a lot of detail here for, for some reason using path tracing. I, I don't think it is working as it should. Okay, definitely not. Let me, let me just disable frame generation quickly. I just want to see if it does uh, conflict with the, the image quality. Yeah. Mm, no, this is definitely just uh, <laughs> yeah, FSR stuff. I don't know, it doesn't look very good at all. So let's see if we can get some form of uh, good looking at the ray tracing here or path tracing. So let's go with the XCSS uh, performance, which would be ultra performance. And I mean, we're getting 26 frames per second. It still looks pretty bad, but uh, it actually looks better than in in some areas. It definitely looks better than FSR quality, even, but definitely not recommended, right? Uh, I don't. I would not recommend this. Twenty-seven frames per second path tracing. I mean, it's if you are, are okay with the cinematic experience of twenty-four frames per second while looking like a, a very very old game. Like the the whole point of path tracing is to enhance the visuals. <laughs> Um, and what we are doing here is uh, definitely not that. So, um, I mean, obviously, we're not going to be using path tracing on a $250 GPU. Uh, I just wanted to, to include this in the test just for fun. All right, so here we are with our final test with the Arc B580. And currently, we're at 4K on the high preset. And uh, we are using XSS performance because that's the only preset that actually gets, uh, gets me a consistent 60 frames per second plus experience, right? So let me just show you the settings here quickly. Just going to be a brief here. So XSS performance. And if we have a look at our resolution, uh, 4K. And then all the settings are still exactly the same. So the high preset, everything disabled, any ray tracing that kind of stuff and uh it's actually not doing terribly bad yet it is uh let me just uh, reset our numbers again sorry my my reset number is actually alt and page up or my reset keys and uh page up is also basically switch uh, switching weapons and then alt is bringing up this uh, wheel so <laughs> It's, uh, it's kind of annoying. I need to change that. But it's the only game where this is an issue. All right, so 70 ish frames per second here, 4K high preset. This is actually perfectly playable. We do have um, enough VRAM on this GPU to maintain a decent performance here. We are using around uh, 7.3 gigabytes of uh, VRAM and uh, we have 12 gigabytes available. Now, this might not be the case for every single game that you're going to try and play in 4K, but uh, for Cyberpunk, it is definitely fine. So one more, one last test we're going to be doing is, um, all right, I'm just going to try and drive around a bit because I mean, you can see that driving around is uh, is a little bit more intensive, but we are still maintaining just above uh, 60, 70 frames per second, right? Now, there are definitely some more uh, demanding areas in the game, and it might drop below 60 in t at times, but I do think that those, uh, those locations would be few and far between. Dogtown might be one of them, and... Uh, at, not Darktown specifically, but there is a specific circle in Darktown that has <laughs> a lot of performance drops. And then the Darktown market uh, is also actually very, very heavy. All right. So one, one last test. I want to use FSR performance here with frame generation at 4K. All right. So uh, I just restarted the game and FSR set to performance with FSR frame generation enabled uh, 4K high preset and we are getting 110 something frames per second here this is actually not terrible the input latency is slightly noticeable as i said um if you do start getting below 120 frames per second it means that your base frame rate is lower than 60 frames per second because it, it's the final output is literally doubled okay so basically 50 ish frames per second base frame rate not horrible actually and uh, <laughs> it is impressive that we are seeing 100 frames per second at 4K output. Sure, we are using FSR performance, oops, with uh, which is 1080p internal resolution, which is not ideal. And then we are using FSR uh, the frame generation on top of that. But if you do have this GPN, you've got a 4K monitor, you you can still use it, right? The experience might not be perfect, but it's usable. 
Okay. All right. And I think uh, on this bombshell, I think we're going to end this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.